So this is something else that I do. I offer basically some repair services, some modification stuff, and this is one of them. This is one of the original rainbow pumps. So to me, it actually holds a very big value. This is basically what I do. I love this design. Um, however, this is kind of the prototype. You can see some of the different stuff in here that's very different from what I do. Uh, this one's broken here because it has some clear PVC which cracked. Again, I really dislike clear PVC. So we're going to be replacing that tube and getting everything else just back in order, tip-top shape. We're also going to be adding the dry fire safe feature uh, because this is actually meant to have it. And um, I have some extra power cord I believe that I can use. So it's always interesting. This is not my blaster. So you kind of get a look inside of the brain of whoever was first built this. This is, I believe, one of the Ryan McNumbers uh, Rev 2 or something like that, rainbow pumps. It's very different from anything I've ever done. First, remove these screws from the back. I worked on this one, this particular one, once before. That's why it has uh, my 3D printed handle on there. That's held up pretty well, but the actual PVC is what cracked. A while ago, I did kind of a PSA, basically saying don't use clear PVC, and that's why. Let's take these screws out and see what we have to deal with. Oh, those are deep. There we go. Same size, that makes things easier. So now, whoops, this should slide off. And these two spacers that I had previously put on there should also come out. We're going to continue using this, because this is actually polyester, so that's a high strength. I'm not too worried about that breaking. Now, set that aside. The next step is to get this pump off. This was done in a very interesting way. Again, all of this is very different than how I do it now. But you know what they say about hindsight. This is held on with a piece of PVC. And just a single screw going all the way through. Honestly, I, I love this. It's, it's just so cool to see somebody else's work. Let's take this screw out, and then, God willing, this should pop right out. Yep, just like that. Then this rubber bushing comes off. And then, pump would come off if that handle wasn't in the way. We're going to have to take the handle off eventually, but I think we take the pump off first, so I'm going to remove this big chunk of plastic back here. I'm not sure what material this is. Maybe HDP? Oh, I remember having a hard time getting this on, that's why there are these extra screws. So, you can tell that all of the, uh, all the flat top screws are mine. The hex screws there definitely are not. I don't like using those because with these you get the extra, the head on the top that kind of pulls everything together. With these you're relying on tiny little threads, and actually one of them kind of stripped out, so... It's an interesting story there. Do I have a small enough one? Maybe I don't. Let me see if I have a small enough hex wrench. I found one that should work. So luckily, all this stuff will stay the same, and the only part we need to replace is the plunger tube, and then everything else will work onto that. Then we're looking pretty good. Only two screws left on this side. I'm putting this off because I really don't like working on this, this exact blaster. Screws are out. Remove this piece here, make a little indentation so I know which way it goes. So I just marked where the bottom front was on this, so I could put it on pretty easy next time. And now the pump just comes right off. So that's an easy fix. Now this, you see where it actually broke, it broke on that screw where this handle was held in place. And something interesting to note is that the pistol we made in this are pretty much the same thing. It's really cool that the rainbow evolved essentially from this guy. It's really cool to be holding one of the original ones in your hands and actually working on it. So, let's continue now. Next thing we have to do, you know what? I could probably just break this off and make my life a whole lot easier. I think that's what I'm gonna do. There we go. So now we have to remove these three screws here that we're holding the handle in. And then we can deal with uh, this guy here. So this right here is the spring that holds in the rainbow catch. Uh, I'm able, I was able to take some blue tack, and I don't have a long enough piece when I actually put this in, but if you take some blue tack, 
and just t push it in, twist it hard enough with a screwdriver, it should, it it, uh, it came out last time, so we're going to try that again, mm -hmm. see if that works. That's the screw with the washer, I'm going to put that aside. And now, we have basically just a, a hollow tube here. Now, these, uh, this in the rainbow catch, these screws holding it in, aren't at right angles to each other. They aren't in a cross, they're kind of just haphazardly placed. So, I'm going to actually attempt to just take a piece of paper and sketch out on that where these are. So, on our new bushing, I'm going to be replacing the bushing. Uh, it's the same size as the old one, so all measurements from this point are valid. So, from the end of our bushing to here, or at least to this particular screw, again, they're very haphazard, it is 10 and 3 16 inches. So, we'll make that our rough estimate. From the head of the polycarbonate, it's about 9 and 15 16 So, we'll use that measurement, actually. So now I have a piece of paper cut to eh, about the right size. I'll take off just a bit more. Now I have a piece of paper cut to about the right size. I'm going to tape one end on just like this right here. Wrap it around. And that's the factory edge of the paper. So when that lines up, that's when you know you're good. So now going to just mark out where all of the uh, where the screws are to take it away from the camera for this okay so now I know that this is the top front so when I go to put that back on I can align those dots up and everything will be all good now we're going to take a full measurement of this and cut our new piece everything else isn't really important that we can get once we have it all right so now I've cut a piece of opaque PVC to the same dimensions as this guy here. And now we're gonna start drilling some holes. All right, now I have to remove these four screws. Oh, and these were a pain in the butt to get out last time. Okay, so I just removed the guts. Now we're gonna transfer all the holes onto our new body tube. Okay, so since we cut our body tube, I just put where the catch is going to be on here. And let's drill those holes. Just for fun, let's make sure that I'm drilling the right size holes. These should be 632. That's what everyone uses, so yeah, that's good. Scared me for a second. And after the fact, I added where that little catch hole will be. I just want to double check what the size of that is here, because it's definitely... The catch hole looks to be 11 64ths. It's pretty darn close right there, so this is looking good so far. Going to drill some speed holes again uh, on the bottom this time. I always put them on the bottom, but again, since I'm repairing this, I'm going to put them as I would do. And uh, then we can drill the rest of the holes, get the front piece on, and then while that's drying, put the handle on, or maybe put the handle on, then put the front piece on. I don't know. We'll see. All right, those are the speed holes or the anti-vacuum holes. Now tape up your bushing until it's nice and snug. And then just slice off the excess. Nothing new here. If you watch the Mega Rainbow Pistol video, that uh, did kind of the same thing. Stick it in part of the way. Come on. Doesn't go in. I'm just going to bevel this just a little bit. That's good. And then add the goop. Where is the goop? Mike, have you seen the goop? Oh, there's the goop. This one I'm actually going to let rest. Yeah, that's going to be a great seal. Wipe off the excess. So I don't have my usual template here. So instead what I'm doing is taking a piece of thick, strong tape, duct tape, and then, because this is a hexagonal piece, if you actually go from corner, skip one, to side, yeah, it's a little off, there we go, to corner, to side again, you can get a decently good job of getting four. And now just drill and then tap. That's my dog screaming because it's actually just turned New Year's. Happy New Year, everybody. Quickly tighten those down and then put some duct tape over that because that stuff is smelly and not in a good way. All right, that's dried a bit. Now we're gonna start assembly. I'm gonna take out this screw because to put the catch together, 
I need to actually remove the trigger from the handle. Then we can put that in place. So I've marked off on the bottom and on the top where I'm going to be drilling. And again, if you saw that rainbow pistol video, we're going to be doing exactly the same thing. Drilling through the top, then the bottom, then widening the holes for the top. So we can sink this countersink in, throw the screws in, and then throw everything in from the back. Alright, so on one of those holes, I actually I accidentally drilled all the way through and widened this bottom hole. That should not be there. So to correct that, I'm going to sink the screw here as I normally would, and then I'm going to see if I can take a zip tie at the front and hook it through that second hole I just drilled there on the bottom. Basically, there's two screws here instead of three, and if I add something here, that would support it better. It worked with three, and actually, if I put this up here, it should be fine. So, let's continue. Add these in from the top, get a little bit of fun tack from my wall here. Get those lined up. Come on, I know you want to go in there. It's a little tricky at first, but once you get it started, it's not that bad. Okay, that's one in, and now let's get the other one in. This might actually work after all. Now, let's put this guy back in. We need to re-lubricate him. Like that, get it nice and lubed up. Yeah, just get your fingers in there. Want this nice and greasy. A wet rainbow is a happy rainbow. Let's put him in. Strangely enough, this omnidirectional catch hasn't given me problems. Don't ask me why, please. Now, if we get this in, we do the same thing as before. It's really amazing. Once you get one down, it kind of gets easier. And now line up those little holes. Hard to see here. Just get some of the gook out of there. Okay, I finally got one of the holes, as you can see, to line up there. Basically, I just shone a light on it until I could see the little hole from before. So, let's keep going. I'm going to try to attach the catch, because that is the most difficult part. I'm going to need a lot of fun tack for this one, because I don't have the right... I don't have the right driver. So this is going to be a bit of a balancing act. Okay, so I've made a tool out of a paper clip. I'm going to use that and try to hold it. Just like that. Get it under. And then screwdriver it in from the bottle of the handle. Now I don't have a specialty tool required to do this, but I do have a flathead screwdriver. So I took a hacksaw and cut a slot in there so I can actually use a regular old really long screwdriver on this piece. Alright, we finally got the catch screw in there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's in there. I'm gonna tighten these guys down and continue with the assembly. Now we just have to drill the holes for the stock and should be should be mostly good. Oh, don't let me forget about the uh, dry fire safe part too. Can I fit a screw in there? Uh, it has to be a number... I can, it just has to be a number 8. Okay, that's not a big deal, we can do that. Now we can attempt our... our fix on the top. Should probably tap that first. That would be a good idea. Alright, I have my screw right there. I'm gonna take this zip tie and see if we can... we can get it through. Gotta bend that up and then bend that up again. Booyah! Perfect. Reinforced. Just how we need it. Cut off the excess. Pretty good. Now let's sink this screw back in. No interference, that's good too. Perfect. Now let's remember the order of operations. Our pump was removed first. Looks like I'm gonna have to take the tape off, put the pump back on. All these guys in. Yep, they're all in securely, no, no sliding from the front. Now let's put this back on. I think I put this on at the bottom. That's what that uh, little arrow means. So now our pump's on. We need that end piece on too, that rubber piece on. Then we put this little PVC block, put one of these screws through it. And then once we have that in, this will actually be a functioning pump action. It just won't have the stock on, which we're going to add on 
in just a second. Very good, now you can actually see a little bit of the screw popping out the other end. It's fully supported and we are good to go. Let's just catch that cat. A uh, catch needs to be tightened. No big deal, I'll adjust that and we'll get right back to work. Okay, catch is working just fine now. That's what this is, it's a lot of troubleshooting. I'm gonna drill through this to get my power cord through there to make a, a uh, dry fire safe blaster. Then carefully, because it's round, boom, put this through the stock, both parts, and then we get it through those holes that have been drilled there. And then we can actually attach the stock, tie the knots, and this stuff will be complete. That was easier than I expected, to be honest with you. All right, the, the power cord is through, I'm just taping it there. The important thing is that one comes out the top and one comes out the bottom taping it there because it's a nightmare trying to get that back on after the fact. Let's see if this will work. I may need to tighten that pump a little bit. You see it's not really moving. Yeah, I think that's what I had to do last time too. Yeah, I just had to tighten these screws a bit more. There's still a lot of friction on that pump, but on the bright side, if you pump it back and then push it forward, it's going to stay there. See, that's exactly what I mean. There's so much friction on there, I have no freaking idea why. I've tightened this down as much as I could. I even added an extra screw on all these sides, so... I don't know, I'm gonna try and get it as smooth as I can, and then... There's nothing really else I could do at that point. Alright, now I have to put these spacers on. There's one at the top, and one at the bottom. I'm just going to drill right through. Holy mackerel, that balances, that's awesome. And then... Just sink the screws in. Oh, I removed one screw that was popping out here. That's as smooth as butter now. Got those two supports in. And with this solid PVC, it's never gonna break ever again, Zach. So you don't have to worry about that anymore. All right, now that I've tied that power cord, the only remaining step is to cut and burn those ends. And we should be pretty good. So now, I'm going to remove the other four screws from this catch. Jesus Christ, I hate you. <laughs> that's going in there. Yeah, I'm still filming it. That's, that's definitely going in there.